Sometimes when I'm prototyping, a multimeter just isn't the tool I want for doing inline current measurements. So I set out to make an ammeter with my competing needs of fast prototyping and semi-permanence in mind. Can this all be done using an 8-bit microcontroller with only 4K of memory? I'll start by hand assembling three of the boards I designed, placing each component with tweezers and soldering them one pin at a time. Assembly of three boards took me just over an hour and here's how they turned out. I'm planning how to modify the PCB because of my connection errors. PB1 is not an ADC input so that has to move. I2C pull-ups should go to VCC, not ground. PB0 is also not an ADC input, so now PB5 will measure VCC instead. The programming connections to the chip are all wrong, so I'll have to program the chip on a separate board and then transplant it. These changes in the schematic transform into some simple wire bonds between existing pads and some firmware pin reassignments. Using enameled copper wire, this can be done with some tweezers and some patience. There's a hardware module in the 80 tiny chips called the USI. It uses pins 5 and 7 for serial communication. I've connected the I2C lines to pins 2 and 3. I don't know why I've done this, but I have. I could modify the PCB, but a simpler workaround would be to use an I2C library that allows serial communication on any GPIO pin. This happens a lot, and it's got its own name, bit banging. We'll solder one of these 80 tiny chips onto a breakout board, plug that into a programming board, connect it through the Arduino IDE, flash it, and... Oh dear. I've run out of memory. Let's just remove one of these bitmap characters I'm not using anymore, and hope that's enough. Let's reflash the chip and see. Yep, that was lucky. Now move it over to a different programming board where I can check the firmware functionality using a trimmer pot going into one of the ADC pins. Turning that adjusts the voltage on that pin, and that should convert to an adjusting value on the display, which it does. Displaying bitmap characters on these OLEDs is confusing at first, but simple once you break down what's happening. This specific display is divided into four pages, each 8 pixels tall. 8 pixel pages corresponds to 8 bits, and you write to them one byte at a time. A 1 lights the pixel, a 0 turns it off. You continue writing this data one column at a time, until you've drawn your character, then move on to the next page, then the next page, and then the next page. A character 6 pixels wide is just an array of 6 bytes one after another, and you can see how changing which pixel is lit changes the value of the corresponding column. Everything starts with a 0, then as we light all the pixels in the columns, the values of the elements in the array become FF in hex, or all 1s in binary. You can draw larger characters using the same method, but dividing the characters up and displaying them over multiple pages. Here, the first column in the first page is drawn and displays FF, and FF in the first column of the final page draws a column in the bottom left of the display window. By adding a delay to the pixel write function, I can slow down the process and give you a practical demonstration of what I've just explained. You can see a rectangle drawn 8 bits at a time, and then moving on to the next page. If I reduce the delay, you can see how eventually your eyes can't process the speed at which this is happening. All of the characters in this device are drawn on a grid and displayed in the way I've just shown. You have the choice to connect across the shunt resistor using a variety of methods, including the pin or socket headers, the sprung terminal blocks, the plated fingers for crocodile clips, or for direct wire soldering. I ended up with a 2% error, which isn't great, but for the purpose I built it for, it's good enough. With a range of plus or minus 2.5 amps and a resolution of 10 milliamps, it'll be a useful tool to have on hand. I can now use this whenever I want to measure current between two points, whether it's into a battery or into the LED lighting above my desk. How does the current change when I dim them by 50%? What's the short circuit current of this solar panel, and how much current does it produce when I emit 60 watts of light from a car bulb? I can see myself using this a lot but the next iteration will definitely be battery powered, so you can really use this anywhere. Stay tuned for that. I've added a link in the description to the GitHub repository where I've got all of the software, firmware, and KiCad project data for everything you've seen in this video. This project was a lot of fun, and uh, I learned a lot about firmware, including the dangers of incorrect data types and integer division, and I was very close to not being able to fit that program on the four kilobytes of programmable memory on the 80 tiny 45. I think I ended on 98%. And I didn't have much more I could get rid of. Thanks for watching. Bye.